I'm about to take on a giant veal schnitzel challenge, which comes with four different sides. And if you can finish it in under an hour, you get the meal for free. But if you fail, it's gonna set you back $100. Now, during this challenge, something unexpected happened, which could jeopardize my goal of winning every single challenge on this Australian food challenge tour. And the battle is on, as I'm at Munich Bra House in the South Wharf area of Melbourne, Victoria of Australia. As I'm looking to get my 18th win here in Australia, while battling this food monstrosity known as the Schnitzelmeister Challenge. Now, you just heard me say before, something crazy and unexpected happens, which I'm sure piqued your interest. And you're probably wondering, oh, is this going to be one of those things where you just dangle something juicy in front of us that make us watch to the very end just to see what it is? Well, not exactly, because this actually happened pretty early into the challenge, and it's not flattering whatsoever. But something quite unexpected did happen when a piece of that fried veal schnitzel didn't go down like it should have. Thankfully, it all turned out okay, and I recovered just fine. And just to clear a few things up, this is certainly a risk that comes with doing restaurant food challenges, and I take full responsibility for choking here. With that being said, I could have easily edited this part out, or not even show this video at all. But because I take full responsibility here, I think you just have to take the bad with the good, regardless of how unflattering it is. And if I didn't, it just wouldn't sit well with me, probably as well as that bite of schnitzel did. <laughs> And we're making jokes, which is always a great way to smooth things over. But coming back to the challenge at hand, I was preparing for the worst. But here's where things got very interesting. Because after talking to the manager, he said that they didn't have a rule specifically for choking. And since it was so early into the challenge, embarrassingly enough, the restaurant decided if I was up for it, they were willing to give me a mulligan and restart the challenge. And of course, I was not going to say no to that opportunity. Alright, so let's take another stab at this schnitzel challenge as I try to move on from that traumatic ordeal and take a few smaller bites during the schnitzel challenge. You could say that instead of going to town and sending it down, I'm playing it slow and going with the flow. Now for this challenge, in addition to that schnitzel, it also comes with four sides of your choosing. In this case, I went with the mushroom sauce to help complement that schnitzel, then also went with some sauerkraut and potato salad to keep things more traditional. And finally, for my last choice, I went with some sweet potato fries because, well, they're basically like a dessert for me. And regardless of what kind of challenge it is, if it's an option, I'm taking them no matter what. So I gotta give a shout out here to the restaurant for these super authentic vibes and overall awesome atmosphere. Not gonna lie, my favorite part was probably seeing that Alporn, which I can't recall a time I've ever seen one in person like this, let alone being used, which was playing during my challenge. And with all the sights and sounds and general atmosphere here, it was as appealing to the eyes and ears as this food challenge was to my taste buds. And I have to say, that veal schnitzel was very juicy and flavorful, though a little more chewier than I anticipated as you probably could tell, which again, that's all on me. Apparently I need to be more careful when putting big old fat pieces of meat into my mouth, but as far as the schnitzel goes, I really enjoyed it. It did have a little bit more breading than I was anticipating, but it was fine here because I thought it still tasted great. Mixing in a little bit of that mushroom sauce was pretty fantastic, which I do know upset a few people last time just because when it comes to schnitzel challenges, I really don't like to use that much sauce, if any at all. But perhaps moving forward, I'll do some sort of one bite, everybody knows the rules sort of taste test with particular pairing of items, but we'll see. The schnitzel by itself, great. Mixing in some of that mushroom sauce, even better. And also, tossing in a little potato salad here and there was pretty good too, as when the creaminess hits your lips, combined with the mix of herbs and spices and the chunky texture of the potatoes, it was just an all around solid comfort food and certainly appealing to my German roots.
You know what else was getting at my German roots? The sauerkraut, of course, which I thoroughly enjoyed, even by itself. And since its sour and tangy flavors were a nice contrast from the potato salad, it acted as a fine palate cleanser of sorts. And I was able to take it down with ease. And I enjoyed every bite. Oh yes baby, time to get at these sweet potato fries. Not really much to say here, it's pretty much the same thing anytime I get sweet potato fries. I love them, they're the best, and just short of burning these to a crisp, it's almost impossible to do these wrong. And it was no different here, as they had that warm, softer inside that oozed with that natural sweetness. I mean, sweet potatoes, they're so good, and quite frankly, they're something I can never get enough of. Which is why I was just starting to pop in these bad boys, one after another, after another, after another. Well, I will certainly say that this was quite the unforgettable adventure, for better or for worse. But it all worked out in the end, except it's not over just yet because it's time for my post-challenge victory push-ups. And while I bust these out, be sure to leave a little magic of your own by liking the video and commenting down what you thought about this dicey food adventure. And to watch more from this trip, tap the video on the screen or click the link in the description down below and I'll see you there.